As the sun set on the United States in the year 1830, a dark cloud loomed over the land of the free. The Indian Removal Act, a law passed by the US government, authorized the forced relocation of Native American tribes living in the southeastern part of the country. This relocation, known as the Trail of Tears, was a tragedy of epic proportions causing the displacement and death of thousands of Native Americans. This is a moment in history that should never be forgotten, and we're gonna talk about it here today. Hi, my name is Sebastian and you're watching 7 Fact. The Trail of Tears was a horrific event in American history as Native American tribes were forcibly removed from their ancestral lands and marched across the country to new territories in the West. The Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek and Seminole nations were forced to leave their homes at gunpoint basically with little more than the clothes on their backs. The journey was long and treacherous, with Native Americans forced to endure harsh weather, disease and starvation. Along the way, thousands of men, women and children died, their bodies left to rot by the side of the trail. It was a heartbreaking scene, a grim reminder of the brutal cost of US expansion. Despite the tragic toll of the Trail of Tears, many Native American tribes refused to give up their culture and traditions. Today, these tribes continue to thrive, keeping alive the spirit of their ancestors and honoring the memory of those who suffered and died on the trail. This event is a powerful reminder of the struggle for freedom and the importance of respecting the rights and dignity of all people, regardless of their race or ethnicity. To truly understand the tragedy of the Trail of Tears, we must delve deeper into the complex history of Native American relations with the United States government. After the American Revolution, the government established treaties with Native American tribes promising to respect their sovereignty and land rights. But these promises were often broken as white settlers moved westward in search of new lands and resources. As conflicts between Native Americans and white settlers escalated, the US government began to push for the removal of Native Americans from their ancestral lands. President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act into law in 1830, paving the way for the removal of thousands of Native Americans. Despite legal challenges and widespread protests from Native American tribes, the government moved forward with the removals and used military force to round up tribes and march them across the country to new territories in the West. This is the story of the five nations who were forced on a long march. The Choctaw was an American nation that resided in large portions of today's Alabama, Mississippi and Louisiana. But once the United States was firmly established, it expanded its rule and territories. After a series of treaties, starting from 1801, the Choctaw Nation had found itself restricted to no more than 45,000 square kilometers, or 11 million acres. And in 1831, even that land was ceded to the United States through the Treaty of Dancing Rabbit Creek. The treaty did allow some Choctaws to remain and it provided that the US would bear the expense of moving their homes. Still, being the first nation to be removed from their lands, they were surprisingly easy to negotiate with. The reason was explained by their chief, George W. Hawkins, who said, We as Choctaws rather chose to suffer and be free than live under the degrading influence of laws which our voice could not be heard in their formation. Unfortunately, the removal went horribly wrong. The first groups of emigrants met at Memphis and Vicksburg, but harsh winter conditions, flash floods, sleet and snow hit them hard. Five steamboats ferried them to their river-based destinations, but the temperatures stayed below freezing, clogging the rivers with ice. With food running out, the groups had to survive on just a few boiled corns and two cups of heated water per day. Eventually, government wagons were sent to transport them to Little Rock. When the first groups arrived, a Choctaw chief was reported to refer to their track as a trail of tears and death. In the end, some 17,000 Choctaws made the move. Between 2,500 and up to 6,000 died along the trail. The Seminoles were another relocated nation, but their removal didn't go down as smoothly as the US government had hoped. 
In 1821, the US acquired Florida from Spain, which put the local Seminole Nation on a path of collision with the Americans. The two signed the Treaty of Moultrie Creek, relocating the Seminoles from northern Florida to a reservation in the center. But then, after President Jackson's Indian Removal Act, the US unilaterally voided the treaty, demanding that all Seminoles were to be relocated to Indian Territory in present-day Oklahoma. In 1832, the Seminole chiefs were called to a meeting at Payne's Landing, where a treaty established that they were to move west if the land were found to be suitable. The delegation of seven chiefs inspected the new reservations for months and in the end signed a statement that the new land was acceptable. But, for one, the reservation was the Creek Reservation and some Seminoles had been derived from Creek bands and were considered deserters by the latter. They did not want to move closer to the Creeks. And second, after the chiefs came back to Florida, most denounced the statement, claiming that they didn't really sign it or were forced to sign it, and in any case, they alone didn't have the power to decide for all the nations that lived in Florida. Nevertheless, the first groups were easily persuaded and went west in 1834. The next year, though, a group of Seminoles ambushed a US Army company, killing all but three of the 110 Army troops. This came to be known as the Date Massacre, and it was the beginning of the Second Seminole War. Although outnumbered, the Seminoles effectively used guerrilla warfare and frustrated the hell out of the US military forces. They reacted through General Thomas Sidney Jessup, who changed tactics and engaged in finding, capturing or destroying Seminole homes, livestock, farms and related supplies, thus starving them out. The war ended after a full decade of fighting and many natives were forcibly exiled to creek lands west of the Mississippi or retreated into the Everglades. About 1500 US soldiers died, mostly from disease. But there's no record of the number of Seminoles killed in action, but a great many of them died of disease or starvation in Florida on the journey west or even after they reached Indian Territory. Another Native American nation that had to leave their homes were the Muscogee, also known as the Creeks. A little background to their story. In 1812, the United States was once more at war with their former masters, the United Kingdom. The tension is originated in long-standing differences over territorial expansion and the British support for Native American tribes who opposed US colonial settlement in the Northwest. At the same time, there was a war going on within the United States. Initially a conflict within the tribes of the Muscogee, the Creek War quickly entangled US troops too with interference from Spain and Britain. Long story short, the Muscogee Creeks had to cede 22 million acres of land in Alabama and Georgia to the United States as war reparations. That's about 89,000 square kilometers. The War of 1812 ended with the Treaty of Ghent, in which Article 9 restored sovereignty to Indians and their nations, an article that was flagrantly ignored, of course. A decade later, the Creeks were forced to cede most of their remaining lands in Georgia, but President John Quincy Adams eventually nullified this agreement, an accomplishment never to be repeated again. Even so, it was all in vain because Georgia's governor, George Troop, ignored this and called out the militia. Not wanting to risk a civil war, President Adams gave in. The Muscogees lost their lands in Georgia, but in Alabama there were still tens of thousands of them. Over there too, the state abolished tribal governments and extended state laws over the creeks. No help came from Washington, as the new president, Andrew Jackson, was not nearly as sympathetic as Adams. Creek lands were divided up and the natives were offered a choice. Sell your land and move west, or stay and submit to state laws. Even this wasn't a fair deal, because rampant illegal settlement of their lands continued unabated, and many Creeks, who often were desperately poor, abused and oppressed, were also victims of fraudulent schemes to cheat them out of their lands. This was the stage that was set for the so-called Creek War of 1836, a quote-unquote war that was no more than a violent backlash of some Creeks to the awful treatment of their nation. Nevertheless, it was the perfect excuse to intervene with the military and the natives were forcibly removed to the Indian Territory west of the Mississippi. 15,000 Creeks were driven from their land. 
Up to 4,500 of them never made it to their new home. Next on the list were the Chickasaw Nation. In 1832, the state of Mississippi declared its jurisdiction over the Chickasaw Indians, outlawing tribal self-governance. Faced with no other choice, Chickasaw chiefs agreed to sign a treaty, ceded their remaining territories to the US, and agreed to find land and relocate west of the Mississippi River. Unlike the other nations who received land grants in exchange for ceding territory, the Chickasaw chose to ask for monetary compensation. They sold their land for 3 million US dollars, but it would take nearly 30 years for Washington to honor that agreement. Meanwhile, the Chickasaw bought land in the Indian Territory from the already relocated Choctaw Nation. In 1837, 3,001 people crossed the Mississippi River with all of their portable assets, following the routes established by the Choctaw and the Creek. And more than 500 of them died on the way from dysentery and smallpox. The Cherokee Nation also had to move out of their homelands. Previously, they had established a successful agricultural society in Georgia, with a written language, a constitution and a system of government. Despite this, Georgia state officials and white settlers coveted their land and pressure mounted for their removal. The sparsely inhabited Cherokee lands were highly attractive to Georgian farmers and illegal settlements were rampant. But the real blow came after gold was discovered in 1829, resulting in the Georgia Gold Rush. There was no chance the US authorities would give up their claims on land under such conditions. The Cherokees, though, challenged the Georgian Act to extend state laws, arguing that they were a sovereign nation and not subject to state laws. In a landmark Supreme Court case, Worcester v. Georgia, Chief Justice John Marshall ruled in favor of the Cherokees, stating that the state of Georgia had no jurisdiction over them. However, if you can believe it, Georgia officials ignored the ruling and in 1838, federal troops were sent to forcibly remove the Cherokees from their homes. The journey that followed would come to be known as the trail where they cried. 13,000 Cherokees were relocated to Cleveland, Tennessee and from there, they were sent to Oklahoma in the winter of 1838. The 1,600 kilometer long march was absolutely gruesome. Over 4,000 Cherokees died during the forced relocation, either from disease, starvation or exposure to the extreme elements. By some estimates, as many as 8,000 people might have died while making this journey. Today, the Trail of Tears is considered to be an act of ethnic cleansing. Some historians have said that the event constituted a genocide, although this label has been rejected by others and remains a matter of debate. No matter how you classify it, these forced displacement acts were plain and simply wrong. To this day, they constitute one of the darkest chapters in US history. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. I do hope to see you next time. Bye.